the first maiden voyage of Sorcerer 2 had happened just before we began to work together. Uh, Sorcerer 2 is a sailboat that's equipped as, as a floating research lab, and it had gone around the world retracing uh, some of Charles Darwin's voyages in the 19th century and done sampling from the oceans uh, all over the world. And Craig is an avid sailor, and he began to talk about that uh, as we began to think about the building and think about the design. So the materiality of the building, the materials, the fact that we used the cedar and we used uh, a lot of stainless steel on the exterior, uh, cable railings, all the kinds of things you see on the building. There's, there's kind of one non-sustainable aspect to a sailboat, which you probably know if you sail. They're high maintenance objects. They're very high maintenance, they take a lot of maintenance, and we talked a lot about the wood. We, all, we knew from the beginning that we wanted to use wood on the building. Craig wanted wood, and we wanted wood too. And we talked a lot about, are, are you going to maintain this building? Are you going to come back and oil it like you do a sailboat, so that it always looks like a sailboat? Or are you going to let the wood uh, gradually age and develop a patina, a natural patina? And we very quickly moved to the natural patina, because we, and, and to a wood that you know was high enough in oil content that it could withstand the uh, coastal climate, you know the uh, marine the marine environment, and age gracefully within that environment. And so there were many discussions like that. Every single material that's used in the building was debated and chosen for its longevity, for its ease of maintenance, for its performance in the marine environment, and for its, uh, its embodied carbon content. We ruled out a lot of aluminum very, very quickly for that reason. All our materials were really discussed and judged on that basis. So the building evolved naturally from those discussions. Uh, we chose the cedar because uh, it's more readily available and it, it also is more sustainable than teak is today. Teak was used, you know, in, in the mid-century, mid-20th century on the uh, salk, and the cedar is more renewable and, and more economical these days than teak, and it will weather to a kind of silvery gray color, more the color of the metal and the concrete on the building. The concrete was a big challenge. We wanted to push the mixed design of the concrete. So it's type three concrete, which is a high early concrete, which is used on UCSD campus primarily because it's whiter than conventional concrete, and that's the standard color. So you have this high early concrete, and we wanted to use a very high strength concrete to minimize the amount of concrete. But then we also wanted to maximize the amount of uh, recycled content. So we were pushing fly ash, trying to get it close to 40, 50% fly ash. And we came up with the design. In the end, I think we're down, I think it's, it's either 30 or 40 percent fly ash. And all the testing was done, it all seemed to work great. And the fly ash slows down curing, and then I have a high early concrete which accelerates curing. And in the original samples, it was working great. We did the first couple pours of concrete, it worked great. And then they started um, the um, the test samples started coming back and the concrete wasn't curing as fast as it was supposed to. And there was a bit, one of those panic moments where everything we thought we had in place, and it was, do we get rid of the fly ash and keep going or what do we do? And in the end, we stopped for about two weeks and the curve on the curing of the concrete just was flat and then it just shot up. So, but it took a long time before it shot up. And once, once we saw what it was going to do, then we went, you know, we continued and went through the project and it was fine. But just trying something that hadn't been done, you know, was, I think there was a lot of sleepless nights for a lot of people. And, 